Are you serious? Come on, you're out of control, man. Heck, this. How did you even drink this? You never cease to amaze me. Well, we've got something to do now. Uh, we're doing our video, our next video. I know, I'm relieved too. I was getting a little bit bored. Hi, everybody. Uh, this is Hannah Kubiak again, and I am pleased to announce that we have decided the play that we're going to be using as our framework for our Build a Bard workshop series. Now, there is a clue in this room. It's, it's pretty obvious. Seriously, you don't know? Dude, you are in this play. Hamlet. It's Hamlet. We're doing Hamlet. All right. So, uh, to give us our first video is Sarah Zapian, who is a member of our VFR board, and she actually has had the privilege of directing Hamlet a couple of years ago, and let's hear what she has to say about it. Hi, my name is Sarah Zapian and I'm the company manager for Voices Found Repertory. I've been involved in the company since the fall of 2016, doing various things such as acting, directing, helping out with technical aspects of the shows, and I've been on the board since 2017. And today I'm so excited to talk to you a little bit about my process when I'm directing a show and the initial steps that I take when I'm approaching a text. So thank you so much for joining me. Okay, first things first. This might seem like the stupidest first step or maybe just the most obvious. Read the play. And I know that sounds like, well, yeah, duh. But what I mean is read the play without any filters or preconceived expectations. And sometimes that's easier said for some plays than it is for others. So for instance, if you're picking up Hamlet because you're considering directing it, maybe this is a play that you've already had some experience with. So you might be coming into it thinking that you maybe already know what the play is about, or you already have ideas. Those are great things and it doesn't mean it's bad. But if you, I think, for me, it's really important that first read to try to have a clear mind and I know I personally can fall into that trap of confirmation bias where I have an idea in my head and then suddenly everything that I see confirms what I already have in my mind. So that might be something worth considering before you sit down to read a play you're thinking about directing. So. Um, for other plays, sometimes you might have zero experience with it whatsoever. Maybe it's a play a friend recommended to you. In which case, great. Then you have no preconceived expectations of it. Perfect. Um, but taking the example of Hamlet, if you're considering directing it, the first thing that I would recommend is sit down in one sitting. If it's an uncut Shakespeare, give yourself plenty of time. Try to read it in one sitting. Keep all your highlighters, notebooks, pencils, pens far away from you. Don't try to look for anything. Don't try to take any notes, which if you're like me can be very difficult. Um, and just try to let the play impact you without any preconceived expectations. And what I find is that I discover so much more that way because I'm I'm inviting the possibility that there might be things that I don't know yet. Um, so that's the first thing. Read the play and immediately after you're done, the first thing that I do is I make a list of my first impressions. This is again um, not a time for critical thinking or for editing. What I try to do is distance myself from the backspace button or the, if you're writing with a pencil, 
um, avoiding using the eraser. So this is the time just to free write, maybe set an alarm on your phone or, um, you know, sort of just distance yourself from anything that's going to keep you from focusing. And what I do for my first impressions is <sighs> pretty much this is just a time to be as specific as you can about your impressions of the play. So write down maybe lines that you remember that had an impact. You don't have to know why they had an impact, just maybe they impacted you. And you write those down. What the play sounds like if it were a sound. You know, this play is an alarm bell waking you up at three in the morning. This play tastes like, smells like, it, it, it feels like. Um, all these things will be useful later. Again, you don't have to know why these things are important. They're just your first impressions. There is no judgment here. This is time for you to, you know, call on that inner critic in the back of your head and say, thank you so much for your input, but I won't be needing your help right now. So you can either sit down and shut up or get out. Anyway, that's the conversation that I have with my inner critic in the back of my head. Um, so after you've written down all your first impressions um, and you're as specific as you can, then it's time to move on to the next step. Okay, now that you've done your first impressions, the next thing that I like to do is go through the text and look for all the given circumstances. These are the things that are the cold hard facts of the story. And I kind of think of myself as almost like a little detective. So I get out all my highlighters of various colors, my pens, my pencils, my sticky notes, and I go through and I find what is explicitly in the text. What pretty much can't be argued. Where are we? When are we? What time of year is it? What time of day is it? Um, what are the geographical factors at play? What are the political, social factors at play? Um, all of these things are going to be important when I go through and try to cut the text later, if that's something that I want to do. This is sort of when I go through the entire text, and if it's a play like Hamlet, this step takes a little while because it's a pretty long play before you cut it. Um, but this is a really important step to me because that way I know when I cut the text later, I know why I'm cutting something out. It's because I've already decided, okay, this aspect, while it's included in the story, I don't think is essential to the story that I want to tell. So away it goes. Um, this is also going to be really important later when you're teasing out the design concepts. And this is what you're going to refer back to when you're communicating with your designers and your actors. Now that we've gone through and defined and ranked all the given circumstances, now it's time to do my favorite part. And that is begin to clarify and identify um, my point of view or my concept for the play I want to do. So I think some of the most at least for me, I can have so many things going on in my head that it's really, really important for me to try to nail down and be as specific as I can about what the play says, what it means, and what I would like to, what I would like to say with the play. So for me, what I try to do is I go through these various statements and sort of just fill in the blanks. And it seems kind of simple, but, um, Sometimes it can take me a while because this is really like the meat and potatoes and really the heart of what I'm trying to do as a director with my art. So clarifying my concept. So I fill in these blanks and I'm literally just reading off a note card right now. This is how specific I am with this. Um, this play is about and then finishing with one sentence about the action of the play. This play is about a young man who, after discovering the murder of his father, must face his own relationship with violence and masculinity. I don't know, that's just one that I literally came up with off the top of my head. This play says blank. This is sort of like a moral statement that, uh, that I make about the play. This play says that um, 
toxic masculinity and an inherent bias towards kindness will ultimately end in your own defeat. Um, this play is, and then a metaphor to describe the action of the play, this play is getting lost in a maze that you built. And um, this play is, and then a metaphor for the mood of the play or how the play makes you feel. So, I don't know, I just love metaphors. So, like, just off the top of my head. Um, this play is burning down, this play is playing with matches and burning your house down with your whole family inside it. Dark, but it gets the point across, right? Lastly, um, the tone goal of the play. So when someone leaves my show, I want them to feel blank or I want them to do blank. So it might be when someone leaves this production of Hamlet, I want them to go and call their dad and tell him that they love him. Or when someone leaves this play, I want them to, um, I want them to feel compassion towards their friend that they know is going through a rough time or whatever it may be. But those are really specific things to know. And it isn't until I fill in those blanks that I really feel confident in, in my design concept. Um, and I, that's why I really love metaphors as well because it gives you a real sense of what you're getting from the play without putting your designers in like a box, like it must be this way. Um, instead it just kinda is a clear and concise way of communicating uh, what the play says to you and what you would like to say with the play. Okay, now it's time to cut the script. This is of varying degrees of difficulty depending on the play. So for this part, I'm sort of just gonna talk about my own experience when I directed Hamlet and how I cut the script. So I was really lucky because everybody and their mother has done some sort of version of Hamlet. So I pretty much just found every possible production of it that I could get my hands on and literally sat in front of the TV and watched every production. I was like, oh, okay, so they cut this part out. Ooh, they cut that part out. Okay, I don't know if I wanna do that. And I just took notes on what everyone else did. Um, so I watched, um, uh, obviously Kenneth Branagh's production, which was sort of just to see it anyway. I mean, I'd seen it multiple times before, but um, as far, it wasn't really super helpful to my cutting process because he literally cut nothing from it. Um, but I watched Mel Gibson's production, David Tennant's production. Um, I've also just seen the play done a couple of times, so I kind of had that in the back of my mind and sort of just let all of that inform me as to how to cut the text. And because I had already done all the work of defining the given circumstances, knowing which given circumstances were important to me, knowing how I wanted the play to make someone feel that all was in my arsenal and formed me about what was essential to the story that I wanted to tell and what I could kind of trim away. Um, it, I also found it really helpful once I had a cut to read it out loud myself to time it because I, anything over 90 minutes can get a little long for me. Um, so I read it out loud to myself and I also got a group of people to read it with me and that sort of cemented, okay, yes, that transition works, ooh, no, that doesn't really make sense, I need to revisit that. And that was sort of like my final um, step in cutting the script because it gave me an idea of, okay, this 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 sounds right or, or no, this, this sounds weird. Um, I tried to be as respectful to the scansion as possible so that way, um, you know, if you were just listening to it, the, the iambic pentameter would remain uninterrupted and that made it flow a lot more seamlessly than if I had just sort of cut whatever. Um, yeah.
now that I know what I want to say, I have the play, I have a cut of the script, I have 50 different ways of describing the action of the play, I have 50 different ways of describing how the play makes me feel in various places, it's time to assemble your design team. And before I, I do that, I, this seems kind of obvious, but it's what I do, so I will mention it. Um, I go through and I make shopping lists for all the design elements. And this is sort of my way of assessing the level of involvement each designer is going to need to have. So for instance, if I'm directing a comedy, if I'm directing, you know, as you like it, the sound designer might not quite be a sound designer. Maybe it'll be the music director for the show. Or, um, you know, if I'm if doing a play that doesn't require quite as much music, well then maybe it'll be that role will look like a little something different. But I don't really know that until I've gone through and made a list of all the, the requirements of my text as it stands now, now that I've cut it. Um, so I'll make little shopping lists. What is said outright? What is essential? What is implied? Um, by this light of day, etc., etc. Like, okay, well, it's daytime, or there must be some kind of light source, things like that. So I'm, I don't have to be super specific at this point, but this kind of gives me an idea of, oh my God, I didn't realize there were so many light references. I am gonna need someone that's gonna be able to give me a lot of, a lot of time and effort here. Um, because there's nothing that, that bugs me more when, when someone asks me to do something is when I don't have a clear idea of their expectations of me. So what I, what I try to do as much as possible is have a fairly clear idea of what each designer, what I need from each design aspect. Um, depending on the play, I might have more or less um, detail on what I expect, but for the most part, I try to have at least a, a shopping list for each design team member, and then I pretty much go from there. And with that information, I uh, I reach out to various people that I think would be interested, and I think I, or at least I aim to try to give them as much information as possible about what I expect from them. And that's what the shopping lists are for. Okay, it's about time to wrap up. So I would just like to touch briefly on my own experience when I directed with VFR and when I directed Hamlet. To be perfectly honest, I wasn't even sure I really wanted to direct it. It had just been on my mind for so long. And at a certain point I was like, well, it won't freaking leave me alone. So I might as well look into it. And a couple of my friends encouraged me to, to dive into it. I actually reached out to uh, one of my professors from college asking for advice. Um, you know, the, the, the fear of not doing something the right way can be so crippling, especially to me. Um, I like to refer to myself as a recovering perfectionist and that fear of not doing it well enough was sort of stopping me from jumping in. So when I emailed my professor, um, she had some great advice for me, which was, sh she said something along the lines of, if Hamlet is one of those plays that I wish I could direct every 10 years, because at each one of those points in my life, I would have seen something different in it, and it would have done something different for me. And I was like, oh, you're right. <laughs> Just because I'm young and my experience is limited right now, it doesn't mean that should stop me from trying big, scary things. Because that's where all the good stuff is, right? That's where courage comes in, the, the big, scary stuff. So with that in mind, I sort of just jumped in and my roommates of, you know, at the time could tell you that it was very obvious I was working on Hamlet because all the walls in the hallways and everything were just covered with 
quotes and craft things and sort of like what's behind me except times 100. Um, I was painting things. I had um, like those color paint swatches that you can get from, I don't know, wherever you get paint from. I had those cut up and put everywhere. I had magazine clippings cut out and pasted questions everywhere. I had so many questions. I still have so many questions about this play. And and I sort of just dove in and um, it was one of the best decisions I could have made because um, yeah, coming in with questions, I think it's the best way. It's the only way to make discoveries, right? So thank you so much for listening. <laughs> if you made it all the way to the end, thank you. Um, if you have questions about any of these things or if you'd like to share what your process is, comment below. You can reach out to me. I'd love to have a conversation about it. This stuff is my jam. And make sure to stay tuned and watch uh, the next video on the Build a Bard workshop series. Thank you so much for watching and uh, I'll see you around. Thank you.